Five super cool lyrics from John Schofield's tune Endless Summers. I'm going to discuss how he is using Charlie Parker language like flat seven going to three. How you can visualize chord shapes in his line that's really helpful. And how he's changing the subdivisions like the 60 notes to the six tuplets and quintuplets at the end of the line and how that's always a great surprise. <laughs> Start the phrase, visualizing this shape, and then just play a B minor pentatonic, ending on the ninth, and then those very cool fourths, right? This fourth interval is always very cool sound, very modern, and then he already introduces the F which doesn't fit on the B minor 7 because he's already thinking about the next chord, the E7, and just C two extra notes. He uses this a lot. So he's starting on the B minor 7 again, and then Transitioning into the E7 again with the flat 9, flat 7 third. So it's the exact same thing. But then he goes somewhere else. And you can sort of see this shape. And this augmented chord also you can find it in the altered scale. So it's just like a matter of how you use stuff and what you visualize or hear in a scale. That, and I really like this ending. It's like, in my mind, it's a little bit like going to D7, G major 7. So maybe that's where it stems from, but he's playing it over the A minor 7. So it's going to the 13 and to the 9. You know, if you have a thing that works very well, which is very logical, a line that is very logical, you can use it on another chord and it will still work and sound very hip. So starting on the minor third, on the B minor seven, trill on the third of the E7. Starting the E7 super early, right? Playing the arpeggio, arpeggio of the E7. And transitioning into the altered scale from the root. just A Dorian on the A minor 7 chord. Very plain but great phrasing. Check out the rhythm. It's really hard to like articulate those 60 notes and play really like tight and if you want to challenge yourself record yourself a looper like I did and try to play those phrases without him and see if you can get the starting points and all the details of, of the phrase. <laughs> can visualize the E7 augmented shape again. Maybe even like this. And think about this shape and just like the notes in relationship to the chord voicing. And here already this G, you can think about this G as the flat 7 of the next chord, the A minor 7. And he transforms the A minor 7 in an A7, that's a secondary dominant. And something like this happens a lot, right? That chords are transformed into dominant 7 chord because it's just a lot of fun to play over them. Right? And then we have it again. Flat 7 going to major 3rd. Flat 7 of the E minor. Right, I'm always thinking the two chord, and then it's the flat seven of the two chord, A minor pentatonic. Right, you 
you could also sing flat seven, major third. And then going to the D7, flat seven to the third, chromatic approach from below to the five. And then this very cool three notes per string scale. D7, just plain D7, mixolydian. And this legato playing is really very typical for John Schofield and I really want to investigate that more because playing legato gives you so many more colors and you don't have to pick everything and you can play a lot faster but still of course you need to be careful about your time. So Schofield stays more or less in those 16 note subdivisions but at the end of this line he changes them into six tablets and with this last line, which is the coolest line, <laughs> he changes the line at the end into quintuplets. So there's always a lot of surprise and not so much predictability where the line is going to end. So I'm going to play it. <laughs> starting the line on the 4 minor chord, emphasizing the 6th, and this is C minor pentatonic, right? You can think C Dorian, C minor pentatonic, you can really visualize the box of the C minor pentatonic shifting the same box into the B minor 7 and now he's doing this thing that I already talked about like visualizing whole tone steps <laughs> on a string right like whole tone step and I think he plays it like this because it sounds like this going into the quintuplet So basically the fingering one three stays the same and he's just using it to shift along the fretboard. So how do I get those licks up to speed? I learn them by heart. I practice with my AnyTune Pro app starting at maybe 60%, playing with 60% until it feels sort of natural progressing to 65, 70, 75, so I can spend like an hour easily with one lick trying to get it up to speed. But there's also this very important point where I need to let go of my perfectionism, just put the damn thing on 100% and just play along to get the feeling for the speed. And I think if you can hear the line in your head in this speed, you can probably play it. So I hope you're all doing fine. If you have any questions, please write them down below and I'll see you soon. Bye.